knee flexion beyond 90 degrees. Oh, that's already gotten a little bit better. There's a little lift, but that's better than it was. Okay. That's the passive element. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to the firing pattern piece. Each of you have muscle charts, so you'll be able to see this, right? Look at those hamstrings. Look how they split, split at the back of the knee. The hamstrings do not attach directly on the posterior side down on the tibia. They split over. One is on the tibia, one is on the fibula. So to palpate these, we can't have our hands be like this. They have to be like that. Feeling on either side. They're not too big where I'm like. Okay. Gastrocnemius. Where does it go? Well, it goes right behind the knee. So I guess where my hand should be for that. Not, I mean, you would feel it out here, but we're here. So my hand placement looks more like this. And then nice and slow, bend your knee. Everybody go ahead and do it. Once you get your hand placement in, make sure you're denting it. Bend. Good. Your gastroc hand, you may want to just go to a, right there in the middle. Nice and slow. Very good. Now to walk around to the other side, or you could do a cross table. Okay, and the knee. Oh. And again. Okay. Cool thing here with Sarah, uh, her first action, I did feel that gastroc. Second time I had her do it, it already changed. But I gotta. All right. Now, this one's harder to interface with because if I'm going to, if I found that this is wrong, applying inhibitory pressure here plus movement is just not going to happen. Applying inhibitory pressure here is going to hold the leg down, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be able to have a person do a full-on action like this while I'm applying pressure here. I have to maybe say, okay, what I'm going to have you do is just start to bend your knee. Show me right there. See how small that was? Good, right back down. Okay, just start to bend the knee. Okay, good. That's what I want. Then, in order to correct this, it would be inhibitory pressure right into gastroc. Now, this would be the more efficient way to do it right here. But I've coached them this tiny movement that I need. So here, same cross body. Okay, real small, start to bend, okay. Now, I'm, what I'm, the conversation I'm having is, relax, slow. Gastroc, no. Hamstrings, yes. Again. Good, let go. And I'm gonna do just a couple extra ones on this side because it was wrong. Again. Good, let go. This shows you a bit of how I could do cross table, but boy, I mean, you might have to be up on a step. I really wouldn't know, I wouldn't suggest it this being your orientation for this. Mm -hmm. Again, and let go. The orientation I would say is best for this is gonna be right here. We have to make sure they're not rotated weird. They're gonna be like this. You might have to bring the leg out a bit so that you can get your forearm right in the center. Okay, start to bend your left knee. Great. And slowly let go. Again, activate and let go. A little less, much less than that. So, so just start to bend. Go ahead and do it again. Just start to bend. Yeah, and you should feel that there's enough of a contraction occurring, right? Now, you're learning this related to firing patterns, okay? But if we apply inhibitory pressure on a muscle and then have a person concentrically shorten it with active movement, then that is just contract, relax as a muscle energy technique. So I 
Oh, it can get confusing, but is confusing. Is if I do this, I could have just said, all I'm trying to do is release gastrocnemius because I decided that's what I want to do, right? So this could just be, hey, Ben, good, let go. Plantar flex, go ahead and point your whole ankle down like that. That also would shorten gastroc and relax. Both of those would be contract, relax, while I'm incorporating inhibitory pressure. And that would be called a muscle energy technique, contract, relax. Versus if I'm thinking about these chains, then it becomes a muscle activation or firing pattern related thing, okay?